So we've got a couple of facts here about our background knowledge for electricity. Electrons are free to move in conductors, and the flow rate of charges in a conductor is what we call electrical current. Two nice, simple background pieces of information, okay? Now, if we want to illustrate, now this is sort of a Mickey Mouse illustration, a very simplified illustration. Not to take Mickey Mouse's name in vain, but that is a wire. Okay? A wire. A conductive material. And this conductive material, we've said in the past, is allowed, or able, sorry, to let charges flow through it. And you guys probably know, given the choice between positive charges and negative charges, which charge is the mobile charge? Negative. 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 So we've got the electrons, the negatives, and they are free to move along. This is a minus sign inside of a circle. I'm trying to draw little uh, negative particles. These guys are free, obviously a little bit Mickey Mousey because these particles are way too big for the size of this wire. We're just trying to show an idea here. There's billions upon billions of these guys that might be in motion at any given time in a conductor when current is flowing. And they're flowing through this conductor. What's the stationary charge? Positive. positive. And the positive charges are what type of particle? Protons. protons. We've got protons and neutrons that are locked solidly, more or less solidly in place, within the nuclei of the <coughs> atoms that make up this conductor. And so we're going to say that these positive charges, while they may be there, we're not terribly concerned about them because they're not mobile, so I'm not going to attach any arrows to them. All we're saying is that the electrons are what's moving along. And if we wanted to talk about, yeah, sure, these electrons are what's moving along when current is, is uh, flowing, we could say, look, if I want to actually know the current flow rate, what I'm really talking about is the amount of charge passing a point divided by the amount of time that goes by. How much charge is passing per unit of time? And we could talk about that as being, well, when we talk about units of charge, does anybody know what the unit we use for charge is? Maybe you remember from grade nine? It starts with a C. Yeah? It is a Coulomb, yeah. So we would talk about, if one unit of charge passed per second, we would talk about one Coulomb going past every second. Just like if we were talking about uh, water flow rate, we might talk about how many liters go past in a pipe per second. We talk about electrons as flowing in packages called coulombs. Now coulomb is a last name, C-O-U-L-O-M-B, coulomb, okay? And people say, well, why do we use a coulomb? Why, not we ju why don't we just count how many electrons go by? Wouldn't that be simpler? Now, when you go to the store, do you buy eggs by the single egg? Sometimes. What do you buy them by? Dozen. By the dozen. By the dozen. And when you're in math class, do you count actual atoms? Sorry, not math class, chemistry class. When you're in chemistry class, do you count actual atoms, or do you count them in bundles? What's, what's, the, what's the name for the bundle in chemistry class for atoms? Moles, yeah. And when we're in physics class, we don't count electrons by the electron, usually. We count them oftentimes by the bundle. And in this case, the bundle is a coulomb. Okay? Well, that's an interesting question. I'm glad you should ask. One coulomb is equal to 6.24, and it must be a big number if we're willing to bundle it, 6.24 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons. Holy moly, that's a lot. One coulomb is that many electrons. Billions upon billions upon billions. Okay? So uh, 6.24 with all those trailing zeros. That's how many. And when we talk about a quantity of charge, when we talk about a quantity of charge, we use the letter Q. And a quantity of charge is measured in coulombs. But, we, don't, but we, we might be able to count the number of electrons, but we convert it over to an, an, a number of coulombs. Just like when we talk about buying eggs, we don't buy 36 eggs. You buy how many dozen? Three. Nice, small, tidy number. 
And if we're willing to do it for a small number like 12 for an egg, we sure as heck better be willing to do it for a big number like this. Okay? It's a nice convenient way to talk about it. Okay? And there's some physical reasons for why we use that number, but I don't want to digress into that. Okay? Another thing we could talk about, if we know that it's the amount of charge passing through, set, uh, through a, a point in a circuit per second, that's what a flow rate is. The other thing we might talk about calculating is the amount of time that goes by. So the amount of time that passes, and that's measured in seconds. Okay, so nothing new there. The same kind of international standard units that we've always been using. Okay. So here's a formula that people like to use to talk about flow rate. Number of charges that go past per second. You can almost see it right here by my little my word definition. You could say that current could be calculated as a rate of the amount of charge that goes past a particular point in a conductor divided by the amount of time that goes by. And that's exactly what we're talking about here. The amount of charge that goes past current. I stands for current. Now, why we use I for current? I don't know. I, I really can't remember why we use I. A lot of the time, from Q quantity, I get that. I, I can't remember that piece of trivia for why we might be using the I. Q is for charge quantity of charge in coulombs and delta T is for the amount of time that goes past while we're observing this charge go by. And if we want to look at the units for current, if current has units that would match up, up with charge divided by time, we could say that current has units of coulombs per second, but if we say we have one coulomb per second, one coulomb of electrons, or one coulomb of protons, I suppose, if protons were flowing, passing by a point per second, people short form that. They don't like that mixed unit when we talk about uh, current. Does anybody know what unit we typically use for current? Yeah, you remember? Not volts, no. Yeah. Amperes. Amperes, yeah. So one coulomb per second is equivalent to saying one ampere. One ampere. A-M-P-E-R-E. The, the little equation before it. One coulomb per second is the same as saying one ampere. And one ampere often gets shortened down to just being one amp. Excuse me, Steph, could I please have all attendance holders to the main office now? That's all attendance holders down at the main office. And when we write it as a unit in a calculation, instead of saying one amp, that's kind of slang, we say one A. Okay? Capital A. Capital A. So somebody in my morning class said they'd seen lowercase a, uh, maybe on a, a chalkboard like in an auto shop or something like that. That's okay. Maybe they're rushing through it. It's capital A. Okay? Don't don't uh, don't get too upset about it. I know a few of the tech courses around the school do some electricity stuff, so you may be familiar with it from there as well. Capital A for our units. Okay? So I'm not really debating about it. That's what we're going to look for. Okay? One amp. 